Ladies and gentlemen, final call. The ceremony will begin in a few minutes. Please find your seats and turn all electronic devices off. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of our presiding officers, Admiral Samuel J. Paparo, Commander, United States Indo-Pacific Command, and Lieutenant General Laura L. Lenderman, Deputy Commander, Pacific Air Forces, welcome to Yokota Air Base. The change of command ceremony is deeply rooted in military tradition, symbolizing the transfer of authority, responsibility, and leadership of an organization from the outgoing to incoming commander. Today, you will witness a unique change of command ceremony as Lieutenant General Ricky N. Rupp relinquishes command of both United States Forces Japan and Fifth Air Force to Lieutenant General Stephen F. Jost. Now, please rise for the arrival of the official party, rendering of honors, presentation of the colors and singing of the national anthems of Japan and the United States of America. Can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming? Who 
whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. Ladies and gentlemen, Chaplain Euchter will now give the invocation. Let us pray. Heavenly God, we thank you for your presence among us as we gather to witness this change of command. We thank you for gifting us these past years with General Rupp for his leadership, care, and service to the United States Forces Japan Fifth Air Force, Japan, and the United States. We thank you for the guidance and support you have bestowed upon him as he carried out this office and ask that you would continue to bless and protect him as his service continues down new paths. As the guide on of command passes this day, we ask for your unwavering care and direction for the women and men of Fifth Air Force and United States Forces, Japan. Help them to be the disciplined and effective warriors that our nations require, keeping them sharp in thought and action, in word and deed. We also ask your blessings upon General Jost as he assumes leadership, strengthening him spiritually for the responsibilities ahead. Help him to serve with justice, to do what is right with courage, and to never forget the importance of mercy Bless him with honesty and sincerity in word and deed, respect for all, and help him to uphold the highest standards of honor and loyalty that he might serve as an example to all those he leads. And let us not forget those who cannot be here today, those who paved the way for our freedom, and those standing even now in harm's way. And we ask all this in your heavenly name, amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. We would like to recognize our family members and distinguished visitors in attendance today. Please hold your applause until all distinguished visitors have been recognized. Mrs. Charlotte Rupp, wife of Lieutenant General Rupp, who is in Texas, and their daughter Madison and her husband DeForest Gordy in Virginia, their son Colton, who is in Boston, all are watching virtually. Lieutenant General Rupp's cousin, First Lieutenant Nathan Rupp, and his wife Aaliyah. Mrs. Kelly Jost, wife of Lieutenant General Jost and their son Aaron, and their daughter Jessica, who is stateside watching virtually, along with Lieutenant General Jost's parents, Mike and Pat Jost. The Honorable Rahm Emanuel, United States Ambassador to Japan. The Honorable Justin Hayhurst, Australian Ambassador to Japan. Retired General Koji Yamazaki, former Chief of Staff, Japan Joint Staff, and now Minister of Defense Advisor. General Hideaki Uchikura, Chief of Staff, Japan Air Self-Defense Force. Vice Admiral Sinichi Kawamura, Director General of Operations, Japan Joint Staff, attending on behalf of General Yoshihida Yoshida, Chief of Staff, Japan Joint Staff. 
We would also like to welcome all Japanese Self-Defense Force current and retired senior leaders, government of Japan officials, local government officials, distinguished American officials, generals and flag officers, defense attaches to Japan, commanders, senior enlisted leaders, friends, families, and the men and women of United States Forces Japan and 5th Air Force in attendance today. Welcome to our change of command. Ladies and gentlemen, the commander of United States Indo-Pacific Command, Admiral Samuel Paparo. Ohayo gozaimasu. Uh, Ricky, Jester, Kelly, uh, I'm so honored to be a part of uh, today. Such an important day for United States Indo-Pacific Command, United States Forces Japan, the Rupp family, and the Jost family, and uh, aloha to my very great teammate, Lieutenant General Laura Lenderman. Greetings to my very good friend, my very good teammate, Ambassador Rahm Emanuel, and to all the ambassadors here in Japan. You're also very critical uh, to Japan's actions, activities in the region. Thank you so very much for joining us today. Greetings to the mayors who are here today, today. Mr. Kato from Fusa City, Mr. Hashimoto from Hamura City, Greetings to General Retired uh, Yamazaki-san, uh, my former boss <laughs> uh, when I was the JTF commander, uh, Chief of Staff of JJS now, and now uh, administer, uh, advisor to the Minister uh, of Defense. We had a very long discussion just here previously. Uh, greetings to Chief of Staff Koku Jetai and my fellow fighter pilot, uh, General Uchikora-san. Uh, Uchi, great to see you, sir. Greetings to Vice Admiral Kawamura representing Japanese Joint Staff, uh, thank you. Greetings to Lieutenant General Ueda-san, representing JGSDF. Greetings to Vice Admiral Yagi-san, representing Kaijo Jetai. And I see a lot of component commanders as well as adjacent commanders stationed here today. Good to see everybody uh, supporting each other. Thank you very much to the USFJ, 5th Air Force team who put this, thing, put this event together. It's a testament to the commitment to excellence and ladies and gentlemen, uh, please, a round of applause to all of the service members from United States Forces Japan and United States Fifth Air Force. I know Charlotte went back stateside to take care of extended family, which uh, we all know is our first duty is to our families, but uh, I want to recognize the tremendous effort that Charlotte poured out to the soldiers, sailors, airmen, marines, guardians, coast guardsmen, and to their families. Charlotte vastly improved families' quality of life, including most of all yours, Ricky. And uh, I know she was your source of energy and motivation. Our families embody our virtues, and our values. They mold our personal, our professional character, and they help motivate us to be our be very best versions of ourselves. The support of our families is indispensable, essential for all of us, essential to our spirituality. Our service to our country ensures the nation's safety, including our families' safeties. And these are mutual bonds foundation to our mission. Our families make tremendous sacrifices. Our families also serve. Please, ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause to Mrs. Charlotte Rupp. Ricky and I have served together for a long time in previous duties. Ricky assumed command in August of 2021 during a challenging time in the teeth of the coronavirus pandemic. Ricky prioritized alliance management and swiftly reoriented this superb headquarters to address the pandemic's impact. With a keen focus on force protection, 
of over 115,000 Status of Forces personnel stationed in Japan and fortifying this alliance, this world's most important alliance. Ricky safeguarded all SOFA personnel and maintained operational readiness, devoting his time and energy to ensure 115,000 SOFA personnel and especially family members had access to medical care, improvements in quality of life. He also contributed greatly to improvements in both US and Japan bilateral posture, as well as information and intelligence sharing through the Bilateral Intelligence Analysis Cell, or the BIAC. Recently this year, through discussions with Ricky, U.S. Indo-Pacific Command and the Secretary of Defense, along with Government of Japan, we made the historic decision to modernize the U.S. and Japan command and control framework, including the reconstitution, reconstitution of United States Forces Japan to a joint force headquarters. This will complement Japan's establishment of Japanese Joint Operations Command, or JJOC. JJOC will tangibly increase Japan's joint operations capability, facilitating great, it, greater interoperability with U.S. forces. The decision to reconstitute USFJ to expand its mission and operational responsibilities will be the most significant change to USFJ since its creation and one of the strongest improvements to the Alliance's military cooperation and in the Indo-Pacific in 70 years. Through Ricky's leadership, we established initiatives to strengthen bilateral training, exercises, and operations as well as initiatives to bolster our alliance's presence in Japan's Southwest Islands. During our bilateral and biennial Keen Edge exercise in February this past year, we included Australian participation for the first time, making it multilateral. And USFJ had the requirement to synchronize joint force protection and evacuation actions while maintaining operations. These efforts honed the readiness of American and Japanese forces. And through Ricky's leadership, we were able to continue increased bilateral and multilateral cooperation in maritime security and capacity building with like-minded nations like the Philippines. We also reaffirmed the importance of cooperation with partners in Southeast Asia and the Pacific Islands welcoming greater engagement with Japan and Euro-Atlantic partners, both bilaterally and through multilateral entities, such as NATO and the European Union. This is the capstone of 35 years in uniform. Ricky will be retiring in just a few months. So Rick, I thank you for 35 years of incredible service to the joint force and to the nation. Ladies and gentlemen, for my dear friend, for a fellow, for a, for a mentor, for a great American, for a great American family, a round of applause for Lieutenant General Ricky Rupp and the Rupp family. We are seamlessly transitioning the talent as we welcome back Jester and his family. For those of you for fighter pilot talk, his given name is Steven. I just learned that now. Jester is his call sign. 
And uh, I'd like to recognize Jester's family members, starting with his oldest daughter, 19-year-old Jessica, who's watching online because she's a college sophomore studying at Baylor University in Waco, Texas. She's majoring in health science studies with a minor in biochemistry because she's going to be a physician's assistant after graduation, the most respected profession in America. And here with us is his 15-year-old high school sophomore, Aaron, who got a head start and quickly joined Yakota High School's football team as an offensive lineman. Yakota's football team is thrilled to have you on the team, and he's probably already hit the weight room. Jester's spouse, Kelly, welcome back to Japan, and thank you in advance for your service to families. Along with 55,000 service members here in Japan, there are 45,000 service members and over 8,000 DOD fat civilians and contractors and 25,000 Japanese workers. That's a lot of people who'll want to get to know you and vice versa. And you are a leader and a retired officer yourself. Or do I have that wrong? Are you not a retired officer? <laughs> are you an active officer? <laughs> At any rate, you're a leader. Uh, and I realize this is your 16th PCS move, multiple high schools among, uh, among your children who have also served. Ladies and gentlemen, please, a very warm welcome to the Joes family. <laughs> Jester, welcome back to Japan and the Indo-Pacific. You are hand-picked for this crucial duty. As you are so well aware, as we all are, the security environment is much different, much more stressed than the last time you were here in 2012. We have the most challenging set of adversaries in the People's Republic of China, Russia, North Korea, and violent extremist groups. Given the dangerous security environment and our adversaries transactional symbiosis among them, the PRC's increasingly aggressive behavior more than at any other time in recent history, our troops, our alliances, and our partnerships must be ready. I, we, have the most utmost confidence in you, in your ability to improve our fighting position. Ricky gave you a great fighting position in which he vastly improved where we are, and we charge you now to improve it even more, to increase our operational capabilities, our lethality, our readiness, to take USFJ to the next level, to take the US-Japan alliance to the next level, to take USFJ to the level to take to, for the purposes of deterrence and for the purposes of combat readiness. To the entire USFJ and the 5th Air Force team, to all 115,000 Americans who live here in Japan under our Status of Forces Agreement, thank you for everything you do each and every day for our joint force and our nation. Thank you to the 25,000 Japanese nationals who work towards strengthening the U.S.-Japanese alliance. We appreciate your dedication and your commitment to our Japanese alliance. Thank you for your stellar teamwork, for the ironclad alliance that we share, the most important alliance in the world, in the Indo-Pacific, the most important security environment in the world. I am honored to serve among each and every one of you. Thank you. Thank you, Admiral Paparo. Ladies and gentlemen, the Deputy Commander of Pacific Air Forces, Lieutenant General Laura Lenderman. Sir, thank you for your, for your incredible remarks. And good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is such an honor for me to be here on such an auspicious event. 
and allow me to also extend a wholehearted welcome and a thank you to those that are here today. I especially would like to recognize the friends and family of Lieutenant General Rupp and Lieutenant General Jost, and especially our commander, Admiral Paparo, the Honorable Emmanuel, the Honorable Hayhurst, General Yamasaki, and General Uchikura, my dear friend, and our fellow flag and general officers, commanders, senior enlisted leaders, and community leaders. Your presence here today and your unwavering support keep our alliance strong, and it is so appreciated. On behalf of General Schneider, the Pacific Air Force's commander, it is my distinct honor to assist in presiding over today's ceremony and the transition of authority of Fifth Air Force. The security situation around the world is challenging. It has never been more interconnected and more volatile than it is right now. We see that every day in the Indo-Pacific, our nation's priority theater. And no one has been more thoughtful and more deliberate about navigating that challenging space shoulder to shoulder with our Japanese brothers and sisters in arms than Lieutenant General Rupp. His determined leadership and dedication to the U.S.-Japan alliance, our mission, and to our airmen has been profound. He has left a lasting impact. As a strategic visionary, Lieutenant General Rupp focused his efforts on strengthening the U.S.-Japan alliance, a cornerstone of peace and security in the region. And as an air mobility giant who I have looked up to throughout my career, General Rupp brought a wealth of experience in leadership, logistics, and expeditionary operations to Fifth Air Force, increasing the complexity of our bilateral and multilateral exercises and skillfully advancing our force posture initiatives in collaborative and mutually beneficial ways with Japan. As a compassionate leader, he continued to champion the most critical initiatives that safeguarded the well-being of our greatest treasure, our airmen. Through relentless engagement, he has advocated for access to medical care and increased the quality of life investments for service members across Japan. His team piloted a UH-1 ambulatory mission, pushing it uphill to be able to transfer patients quickly to med medical facilities. With eight lives saved since the program started, to enhance this transport care and urgent care cap capabilities, General Rupp worked to upgrade paramedics at Kadena and Misawa and is working towards that here at Yokota. If there's one thing for him to be remembered by for his time here in Japan, it is the thousands of lives that he has touched by focusing on improving their quality of life, enabling our service members to be their best selves in order to accomplish the mission. For these and so many other things, we cannot thank you enough, General Rupp. Though we know these things are not done alone, and I know Charlotte couldn't be here today, and Admiral Paparo welcomed her so gracefully, but she has been such a strong and supportive partner of yours every step of the way. As a tremendous advocate for our military families, she's graciously given thousands of hours and time and service to help members under your command, opening your home and her heart to those that need help. We're eternally grateful for her time, her sacrifice, and most especially her compassion. And we also wanted to wish her a very happy birthday tomorrow. <laughs> And I would be remiss if I didn't take a moment to acknowledge that General Rupp, as he transitions across the stage today, in the next few months, he'll also close a chapter on 35 years of service to our nation. His accomplishments have been pivotal in how we've shaped critical alliances and the modernization of our Air Force. But now, Ricky, you'll be able to focus more of that energy on Charlotte, your family, and your grandkids, something I know that you're incredibly excited to do, and especially those cowboys. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so on behalf of General Schneider, myself, and all of Pacific Air Forces, thank you. Thank you for your dedication to our airmen, our mission, and congratulations on a job extremely well done. Ricky and to Charlotte, we thank you and we wish you the very best in this next chapter. So one of the things that makes our Air Force so incredible is that we grow and develop leaders so the guidance can be passed from one incredible leader to the other. And that's certainly true with my dear friend, Lieutenant General Stephen. I didn't know that was your first name either, by the way. <laughs> Jost. 
So we take great joy in welcoming both Jester and Kelly back to Japan. As you accept the guide on today, I know you recognize the weight of responsibility that comes with it. Jester steps into this position with a wealth of experience and vision that resonates with the values that we share with Japan. Having served two assignments in the Indo-Pacific at Misawa and Kunsan, he understands the value of trust and meaningful relationships here in Japan and across the region. His deep commitment to collaboration, innovation, and mission readiness will undoubtedly lead Fifth Air Force and our alliance to new heights. Jester has completed many tough assignments spanning the entirety of his career, supporting and commanding in combat missions in Iraq and Afghanistan, directing the F-35 Integration Office, and performing critical planning roles on the Air Staff and the Joint Staff. He led the 20th Fighter Wing at Shaw Air Force Base in South Carolina, Air Combat, Air Combat Command's premier wing, where he was known for his visionary thinking and focus on his people, instilling a spirit of resilience and readiness in his airmen. And he most recently relinquished command of United States Transportation Command's Joint Enabling Capabilities Command. And under his leadership, the JEC focused on readiness and led to a reorganization effort that enabled its members to support all 11 combatant commands on almost every continent with a range of real-world alert force missions and COCOM exercises. From Ukraine to Gaza to Haiti, to missions in the Indo-Pacific, under Jester's leadership, Joint Force Commanders received the critical support they needed from the JEC to ensure mission success. So as Ricky has left his mark on the Air Force, Jester has done the same, and we couldn't ask for a better leader to take the flag today and carry on the mission of the Fighting Fifth. So to Kelly and Aaron and Jessica, thank you for your sacrifices and for supporting your husband and your dad in everything that he does. He, we wouldn't know what he would be doing today without your support, especially Kelly. Special thank you to you for your years of service to our Air Force as an outstanding active duty maintenance and munitions officer and leader. You've also been an amazing wingman, mom, and partner. You've listened to our airmen, you've lifted, lifted them up as a commander yourself, and that you've kept doing this incredibly important work as a key support liaison. So as Jester takes his next command, we look forward to your guidance, your leadership, and your support in this command team. So Jester, you have the, developed the expertise and most importantly the, the relationships that will further our alliance with Japan and strengthen the connective tissue with our components because you understand the interoperability between us all. So General Schneider asks that I leave you with a few expectations. One, continue the trajectory and the path that Ricky and the commanders before you have started. There are many changes on the horizon designed to bolster the U.S.-Japan alliance and we look forward to seeing how you successfully navigate and implement those changes. We're in full, full support. Two, continue to strengthen our alliances and partnerships in this region. And as you focus on Japan, also look for multilateral opportunities that strengthen us collectively across the region. And then three, continue to trust, inspire, and empower your airmen to do great things. Because nothing we do is done alone. We are so excited to see where you lead this command. This is a time of consequence for our nation and for the world, and much rests on your shoulders and the shoulders of our airmen and the Joint Force. Revisionist autocracies like the People's Republic of China, North Korea, and Russia continue to jeopardize the stability of this region and the world and threaten the sovereignty and lawful activities of other nations. To uphold our shared values and rules-based international order, the United States alongside our allies and partners, and across the joint force, must continue to train and operate together every day. We must continue to increase the complexity of our exercises and interoperability and interchangeability of our capabilities. I know Fifth Air, Fifth Air Force Airmen stand shoulder to shoulder with the Coco Jetai doing those things every day. Together, we are a professional and vigilant force, ready to face our adversarial actors. And it is with that tenacity and fighting spirit that we will deter those who seek to undermine the peace and stability that we have known for decades in this region. Because of the efforts of Fifth Air Force, our allies and partners know that we are committed to them and the values that we share. So on behalf of General Schneider, we could not be prouder of the men and women 
serving here in Japan who are doing the hard work to solve the toughest problems that we face, ensuring that all of our nations prevail. Again, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. May God bless all of you and your families. Thank you, General Lenderman. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise as Lieutenant General Lenderman presents Lieutenant General Rupp the Distinguished Service Medal, First Oak Leaf Cluster. Attention to orders. The President of the United States of America, authorized by an act of Congress on July 9, 1918, awards the Distinguished Service Medal First Oak Leaf to Lieutenant General Ricky Rupp for exceptionally meritorious service in a duty of great responsibility. General Rupp distinguished himself as Commander, United States Forces Japan, and Commander, 5th Air Force, Yokota Air Base, Japan, from August 2021 to October 2024. His steadfast leadership and tireless efforts contributed immensely to the United States' overall national security during a time of heightened tension that threatened over 40 years of peace and prosperity. As the senior military representative in Japan, General Rupp led many groundbreaking initiatives to include improving bilateral planning and exercises, shepherding complex force posture initiatives, championing an expansion of emergency medical care availability for personnel, and enhancing the U.S.-Japan alliance. He worked closely with the United States Embassy in Japan to strengthen our nation's interests throughout the Indo-Pacific theater, while also providing expert assessments to the Office of the Secretary of Defense. Finally, General Rupp's exceptional leadership and strategic vision ensured that United States Forces Japan remains an effective instrument of national policy for years to come. The distinctive accomplishments of General Rupp culminate a long and distinguished career in the service of his country and reflect the highest credit upon himself, the United States Air Force and the Department of the Air Force. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. And now, the Commander of United States Forces Japan and 5th Air Force, Lieutenant General Ricky Rupp. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, fellow service members, mission partners, local leaders, thank you for joining us here today. Konnichiwa, ohayo gozaimasu. Thank you to Australian Ambassador Hayhurst and my good friend Ambassador Rahm Emanuel uh, for taking the time to attend this event. Thank you Uchi for being here, you and Shohomi. Also a special thank to my good friend General Yamazaki uh, and my good friend Jimmy Schwartz who's in the audience. Jimmy, would you please stand? Jimmy, Jimmy's right behind you. Please stand up. Jimmy, thank you for everything you've done. Thanks to our outstanding component commanders and my cousin, First Lieutenant Nate Rupp and his wife, uh, Leah, thank you for being here today. Uh, thank you, Admiral Paparo, for your kind words, General Lenderman, traveling so far, officiating, and the confidence that you have in me and the medal recognition, thank you so much. Also, a heartfelt thank you to the entire USFJ and Fifth Air Force staff, protocol, the anthem singers, Honor Guard, and all those in formation, you look great, thank you. Everyone else who put together this wonderful ceremony, putting together a change of command ceremony is a lot of behind the scenes work, and I want you to know that you're appreciated, thank you. As I stand here uh, on the eve of my retirement with literally only a few hours remaining in my uniform, I can't help but reflect on the years that have passed. I did not expect to be here when I graduated in 1982 from a small Texas high school. My academic records did not support my enrollment at a military service academy or an ROTC program. Instead, I took a job at Wendy's 
and I worked at the drive through window, and I went down and enrolled in a night school class at the local community college. And for the next seven years, I literally worked dozens of jobs along the way to support myself. I earned a business degree from a small Texas university and ultimately applied for officer training school while working in a bank after graduation. I was a terrible banker. <laughs> from the moment I commissioned as a second lieutenant in 89 until my current role here as a lieutenant general and commander of USFJ and Fifth Air Force, the journey has been one of great pride, growth, and immeasurable reward. And again, I did not know the next 35 years would have what it would have in store for me. Over the span of my career, the Air Force offered me many opportunities. I've been fortunate to serve in many capacities, from flying missions in Operations Desert Shield and Iraqi Freedom, operations in Iraq for humanitarian and Bosnia, serving in posts in South Korea and Israel, all very far from small town Texas. Each assignment taught me invaluable lessons about people, leadership, service, and the importance of our mission. But no matter what the challenges faced, the one thing that remained constant was the people. It's the men and women I've had the honor to serve with. It's the men and women I've had the uh, opportunity to receive their unwavering support. And you've all made this journey so meaningful. I have many people to thank for the journey. Too many to mention them all, but suffice it to say that I did not get here alone. Without the friendship and mentorship of people like General Darren McDo, General Mike Scaparati, Cruiser Wilsbach, General Dave Nahome, General Joe Reheiser, my best friend and brother, Coach Mike Kaslowski, Scott Shapiro, Spike Steiskel, Dick, Teresa, and Lee Taylor, Jolene and Kevin Marchant, Colonel Adam Bingham, and the entire 14th Airlift Squadron family, Pelicanus Exelere. And Scott Benson, we miss you, my friend. Rest in peace. <clears throat> and no journey is travel alone. My family's been my grounding foundation, and Charlotte, you supported me all along the way. Through some very difficult times, you gave me everything to our soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, guardians, coasties, civilians, and their families hosted literally thousands at our home for breakfasts, lunches, and dinners, sacrificed your career as a CPA for our men and women in uniform, their families, and our nation. You made 22 moves happen, five of them overseas, and over the last 15 years, we spent more time outside the United States than we did in it. And on top of all of that, your unmatched public service was well-deserving of the recognition from Texas Governor Greg Abbott as a yellow rose of a Texas inductee. I'm incredibly proud of you. Thank you so much for everything you've done. I love you. To our children, words cannot express my gratitude to both Madison and Colton. You did not ask for or get a vote in the life that we led. The new schools, friends, sports clubs, homes every other year. You endured countless deployments, long nights, endless moves with grace and patience. You're my greatest source of strength. The, your resiliency and confidence were truly inspiring, and none of my achievements would have been possible without your unwavering support. You are the unsung heroes of this long career, and I'm forever grateful for your sacrifices. I love you. Charlotte and I had the opportunity to thank many at farewell events over the past few months. Still, I want to take this opportunity to thank everyone for making our time at USFJ and Fifth Air Force memorable. Serving alongside you and your families here in Japan has been a true honor. Serving in this leadership role during an unprecedented pandemic has been one of my life's most challenging and rewarding times. I witnessed so many of you demonstrate resiliency, leadership, and accomplish many, many amazing things to support the command, the mission, our Japanese allies, the overseas community, and most importantly, each other. Military life is a unique way of life. You inspired me every day. Please know that Charlotte and I are grateful for each of you. Thank you. 
As I reflect on the state of the world today, we cannot ignore the challenges we face. The aggressive postures of the PRC, Russia, and North Korea pose significant threats to the stability of the Indo-Pacific region. The PRC actions, from their military buildup to their blatant disregard for international norms and a free and open Indo-Pacific, are clear provocations. Ironically, the PRC has become our greatest advocate. Their actions have strengthened the resolve of our allies, not just in the Pacific, but globally, and made it easier for us to unite. Russia, too, continues to stir instability with its unjust war in Ukraine through provocative military actions in the region. North Korea's relentless pursuit of nuclear capabilities remains a constant and serious threat. These nations' actions are not just tests of strength, they are direct challenges to the principles of freedom, sovereignty, and peace. We must remain vigilant, united, and committed to standing against these threats. And that unity is built on the strong relationships forged with our allies and partners. I'm immensely proud of the accomplishments that have strengthened our alliance with the Japan Self-Defense Force. We faced unprecedented challenges, but rose to meet them head on by fostering a partnership built on mutual respect, shared values, and a commitment to the security of the Indo-Pacific region. I watched Japan firsthand move with pace over the past three years, drafting new national security documents largely aligned with the U.S. and like-minded nations, doubling defense spending from 1% to 2% of GDP only over five years, increasing the posture in the Southwest Islands, acquiring counter-strike Tomahawk missile systems, and the stand-up of the JJOC to connect alongside our new Joint Force Headquarters here in Japan. These capabilities and relationships, long-standing and newly formed, will continue to ensure peace and stability in the years to come. Investing in these relationships is not just about military exercises and diplomatic engagements. It's about building trust, understanding, and a shared vision for the future. I urge each of you to continue nurturing these partnerships because our success depends not only on the strength of our forces, but on the strength of our alliances. Together, we are far more capable of addressing future challenges than we are alone. Now, while I'm confident the Alliance will grow stronger in the coming years, I'll keep a close eye on all of you from my retirement home in Texas. And I'm sure the Alliance will flourish, and I'm hoping my beloved Dallas Cowboys will do the same by winning another Super Bowl. And I'll be sitting in Cowboys Stadium this Sunday cheering them on against the Lions, but I'll be cheering you on too. People are what have made this journey special. It was never about the location, it's been about the people we met and served with. So many talented people and special spouses have made Charlotte and I better people. We treasure so many wonderful memories with military members and friends that are now part of our forever family. As we prepare to step into the next chapter of our lives, we do so with immense pride that what we have accomplished together. To the men and women of United States Forces Japan and Fifth Air Force, you are the driving force behind every success I've, I've achieved here. And we leave knowing you are more than capable of carrying this mission forward. As you continue this vital work, remember you are not just defending a region, you're defending an idea, democracy, an idea worth fighting for, sacrificing for, and building upon. It's been the honor of my lifetime to serve alongside each of you, and I leave with full confidence in the future of this alliance and the region we are dedicated to protecting. To Jester and Kelly, congratulations on the assignment. Enjoy the ride, and I know you will do great. To my family, colleagues, and friends, thank you for your unwavering support. To our Japanese allies, thank you for your steadfast partnership. To Charlotte, I look forward to the next chapter in our life together and to steal a line from Friday Night Lights, Texas forever. Thank you, General Rupp. 
The change of command ceremony is a military tradition deeply rooted in history, dating back to 3 July 1775, when General George Washington drew his sword under an elm tree in Cambridge, Massachusetts, to assume command of the Continental Army. During the American Revolution, military units carried distinctive flags designed to match the color of their uniforms and emblazoned with their unit motto. When soldiers followed their leader into battle, this flag, referred to as the unit colors, provided a visible point around which members of the unit could rally. Because of its importance, the colors were used in the earliest change of command ceremonies to symbolize the commander's authority and responsibilities to the organization. That tradition continues today. The command senior enlisted leader of United States Forces Japan, Command Chief Master Sergeant Leon Calloway, and the Command Chief of Fifth Air Force, Command Chief Master Sergeant Sean Campbell are the custodians of the unit guidons for today's ceremony and as the senior enlisted service members of both organizations. The passing of the color signifies the relinquishing of command from the outgoing to the incoming commander. Lieutenant General Rupp will now relinquish command of United States Forces Japan to Admiral Paparo, who will then pass the colors to Lieutenant General Jost as he assumes command. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the official change of command. Lieutenant General Jost assumes command as the 29th Commander of United States Forces Japan. <laughs> Lieutenant General Rupp will now relinquish command of 5th Air Force to Lieutenant General Lenderman, who will then pass the colors to Lieutenant General Jost as he assumes command. Lieutenant General Jost assumes command as the 40th Commander of 5th Air Force. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. And now, the Commander of United States Forces Japan and 5th Air Force, Lieutenant General Stephen Jost. Good morning. I echo the warm welcome to everybody here this morning. Uh, many special guests and attendants uh, supporting today's ceremony. Uh, your presence honors not only our uh, senior officials, my family, and me, it honors all the men and women across uh, Japan serving under the United States Forces Japan umbrella. And for that, I am much uh, appreciative. I also want to thank and acknowledge the uh, hard work I know from the air crews and the maintainers that helped put together the beautiful joint air power backdrop you see behind us today. Uh, please don't leave today without going out and getting some photos of uh, some of the uh, joint aircraft uh, representative here uh, that serve here in Japan. I also want to thank, uh, obviously, all the folks in the combined team from both USFJ and 5th Air Force, uh, as well as the uh, team here at the 374th for uh, putting on today's ceremony. Um, I appreciate that. Admiral Paparo, 
I sincerely appreciate uh, you and your kind and inspirational words as always. Uh, I very much look forward to loyally serving under your command, uh, aligning with your vision and implementing the strategy to help meet uh, your strategy to help meet U.S. security interests across the Indo-Pacific region together with our outstanding and very capable Japanese allies. Lieutenant General Linderman, I likewise thank you for your kind and inspirational words, and I also look forward to aligning with General Schneider's uh, vision and implementing his strategy to bolster the joint and combined bilateral strength of American and Japanese air power under my tenure. To you both, thank you for your trust and confidence to lead USFJ and Fifth Air Force into and through significant historical changes to both organizations. I embrace the necessity for change wholeheartedly. Command is truly a privilege and I do not take it lightly. I promise to humbly and faithfully serve at your pleasure and at the pleasure of the Secretaries of Defense and Air Force and the President of the United States. I will do all within my abilities and authorities to further strengthen the U.S.-Japan alliance each and every day. General Rapp, thank you for your dedicated leadership. At USFJ and Fifth Air Force over the past three years, uh, your impact, impacts are many and tangible. And I'm honored to follow in your wake and to build upon the momentum that you have created. Thank you to you and your staff for the warm welcome back to Japan for me and my family. Kelly and I wish you and Charlotte all the very best as you transition from many years of dedicated service to the United States Air Force and our nation. To my Jiatai colleagues, Japanese government officials, and to all the wonderful Japanese people, I speak only for myself and sincerely from my heart. From the moment I accepted command just a few moments ago, you will have no greater ally than me. And that's a bold statement given the company of many great American leaders uh, here today. Nevertheless, I will work tirelessly to prove my words true despite the understandable complexities of the world that we live in and the inevitable challenges that we will face. I will seek outcomes that serve no other purpose than to further strengthen the longstanding U.S.-Japan alliance, an alliance I firmly agree is the cornerstone of regional peace, security, and prosperity in the Indo-Pacific region and beyond. I very much look forward to the professional bonds, close friendships, and more fond memories yet to come. To all the men and women under the United States Forces Japan umbrella, Thank you for your service and your sacrifices. I look forward to working with you as we continuously, deliberately, and urgently work to make the U.S.-Japan alliance ever stronger. As we do, we must be mindful, ever mindful, that we are all U.S. ambassadors in many respects while serving our great nation abroad. I expect that personnel under my command will do so with integrity, discipline, selflessness, professionalism to the utmost, and self-control, with only the deepest respect for our Japanese hosts. Only then can we maintain the necessary laser focus on our warfighting obligations that demand we be ready, resilient, and agile. While the future is not predestined, it is undeniably uncertain. What is certain is that my promise to lead to the utmost of my ability and give you all that I have while serving as your commander, no matter the circumstances, holds true. I will well and faithfully discharge the offices upon which I am entering. I hope to earn your trust in so doing. With that, let us quickly move on to all the important business before us with steady hands and unquestionable resolve. Thank you. Nihon no minasama. Korekara dozo yoroshiku onagai itashimas. Honjitsu wa domo arigato kozaimashita. Thank you. Thank you, General Jost. Ladies and gentlemen, may I please direct your attention to the rear of our ceremony. The 5th Air Force Flagship Crew Chief Staff Sergeant Thomas Quinn will unveil the 5th Air Force F-16 flagship bearing Lieutenant General Jost's name.
Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the playing of the service songs and the departure of the official party. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our ceremony. On behalf of the men and women of the United States Forces Japan and 5th Air Force, thank you for joining us today. Please join us at a reception for Lieutenant General and Mrs. Jost at the Officers Club. We will also ask all distinguished guests to remain seated until your ushers escort you out. And for those who rode the bus from the Officers Club, ushers will direct you to your bus for transport back to the club. Lastly, for our Japanese counterparts, Please place your headsets on your seat.